Hello, my beautiful believer. My name is Susan Von Schumick and I am welcoming you back to Breathless, Breathing Life, reaching beyond the broken borders and into the hearts of men. And I am um, sharing with you my personal testimony. And for those of you who haven't met me yet, I'm, I want to reintroduce myself to you. I'm a counselor and a minister of the Word of God, and uh, and I teach biblical principles of healing, spiritual issues of the heart, and spiritual roots to disease and how those things affect our lives. And I'm teaching about our spiritual authority and teaching how to walk in your authority and how to discern how to discern our thoughts and um, take those all those toxic thoughts captive and unto the obedience of Christ which is the Word of God and so I am walking you from brokenness to beautiful and I've been teaching you on this podcast um, from the beginning and so today is episode 16 which is which is the the act of unforgiveness or the act of forgiveness and the act of communion and you can see all these episodes with poetry and with poetry of the heart which is the gift that God gave me when I was when I got saved and so my prayers are all poetry and so this is my heart and God speaks to me his heart in this poetry as well and so I wanted to first share with you the poem that that God had given me um, and first of all this is and I shared with you on my Facebook and on my web website please go watch my website uh, go to my website mybeautifulbeliever.com and you can see all the episodes also I have a web uh, a YouTube account which is my beautiful believer LLC and I also have an Instagram and a Facebook and which is where this is being played today um, rec and recorded and so I pray that you would join me and subscribe to my beautiful believer and go to my website mybeautifulbeliever.com and and watch all my videos and learn how I've been how God is taking us from brokenness to beautiful and the healing of our hearts and the process of the sanctification of the heart and today is is the uh, um, the act of forgiveness and the act of communion and it's God breathing his life into the beautiful God breathe it it's the beautiful entering brokenness so let's pray father I thank you for this episode I thank you for this podcast and I thank you God for the healing heart of heaven thank you for your words and thank you for your breath of life that you're breathing your life into the brokenness of hearts into the brokenness of bodies into the brokenness of our minds and um, that you are touching us and speaking life into ours uh, like with the Word of God and I pray that you would do that today in Jesus name Amen an act of love words are never spoken suffered silent shame given up for you and me body crushed with pain the heart his heart of love was broken rejected by his friends his mouth was never open abandoned in the end purchased for a price he paid for you and me he sacrificed himself in love and hung upon a tree suffered without sinning the righteous son of god he lost all without winning to serve a greater cause crushed before his father no greater cross to bear 
broken for his brothers to bring restoration there chose to bear brokenness to rescue from above to save us from our helplessness no greater act of love the act of forgiveness and the act of communion episode 16 the beautiful entering brokenness god breathing life into the broken with healing communion first john 1 9 tells us if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness the act of forgiveness so we are told that if we confess our sins god is faithful and just to forgive us with this forgiveness we are cleansed we are we are spiritually washed by the blood of jesus and all from all unrighteousness that is we are washed and cleansed from that sin that lives within when god our father sees us through the sacrificial blood of his son jesus christ we are made clean it is through the act of our confession that god's forgiveness is applied to our hearts and to our lives the word forgive comes from the greek word epitomia it's a fiamine which means to send away or to release forgiveness is the act of releasing offenses trespasses hurts and debts there is an inseparable relationship between the act between healing and the act of forgiveness in fact there is a healing dimension to the act of forgiveness though god has judicially pardoned us in christ as his spiritual children children within his beautiful body of believers he now holds us accountable to walk in love as he loves and to forgive as he forgives to be his beautiful to be his beauty bearers in the earth we are to be like him matthew 18 21 through 22 and 22 tell us then came peter to him and said lord how oft shall i shall my brother sin against me and i forgive him till seven times jesus said saith unto him i say not unto, unto thee until seven times but until 70 times seven. 70 times seven is the response Jesus gave to Peter. This would amount to 490 times, which amounts to every three minutes in a 24 hour day. Jesus continues on by sharing this parable in Matthew 18, 23 through 35. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. For as much, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had had that in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And the Lord and the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him all the debt. But the same servant went out, and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what thou wast owe me, owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, and besought him, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went out and cast him into prison till she, he should pay the debt. So his fellow servants saw what has what was done, and they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then, then his Lord, <clears throat> after that, had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldst, shouldst not thou 
have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee. And the Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due him. So likewise shall my, he my heavenly Father also do unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one of his brothers their trespasses. Jesus told us we are, are blessed. If we show mercy, we will receive mercy as his spiritual children and within the body of Christ. God has given his, us his mercy, his love, and his forgiveness. And with this, this is the commandment to us as his beautiful believers. We are blessed when we walk in love. To walk in love, we must forgive. First, Matthew 5, 7 tell us, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And Mark 11, 24 through 26 say, say, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have aught against any that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. The Bible clearly states when we says states that when we stand praying, we are told to forgive. In this particular scripture, it says that our prayers will be hindered, and we can believe we receive anything we ask when we are stand and praying from an obedient and forgiving heart. When we are not walking in forgiveness, when we are harboring unforgiveness in our hearts, our own prayers are hindered. Not only will our prayers be hindered, but our healing will be hindered as well. When we stand in judgment of others and don't release them, the Lord will stand in judgment of us for our own sin of unforgiveness. It is a spiritual bondage which hinders to which hinders our own spiritual freedom. When we go before God with our gifts, our sacrifice of praise, and our worship, or when we come before him to petition him in prayer, we are told first to be reconciled with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Before we come to him, this is a spiritual law. We are reaping the fruit of the spiritual seeds of unforgiveness in our heart. Matthew 5, 23 through 24 tell us, Therefore, if ye bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy, thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift, thy gift. First be reconciled to thy brother, then come offer thy gift. The word reconcile, according to the dictionary, means, means to restore friendly relations with, restore harmony, make peaceful, patch up, to make harmonious, to settle a dis disagreement, resolve, to resolve differences between. The act of for the act, the, the act, oh my gosh, the act of faith expressed in love. <laughs> Water. Like my cup, I love this. Anyway, all right. Excuse me. <laughs> Maybe I can talk now. Okay. The act of faith expressed in love. Faith works by love. Galatians 5 and 6 says this, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith worketh by love. The NIV says it this way, this way, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself in love. Our faith in God is expressed to God and to others by the love we have for one another. Let me say that again. Our faith is expressed to God and to others 
by the love we have for one another. God lo has loved us even in our sin and has shown us that love by sending his son to die for us, to reconcile each, of one, each one of us to him, to himself through an act of forgiveness. This act of love is now our mandate, mandate as his children, as his beautiful believers. The command that Jesus gave us at the Last Supper was this. The English word mandi comes from the Latin mandatum, which means commandment, as recorded in John's Gospel on the last night before he was betrayed and, arrest, and arrested. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples and then gave them a new commandment to love one another as he had loved them. John 13, 34, 35 tell, tell us this. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. We are to love as God loves, by the power of God, through the Spirit of God, as sons of God. By this shall all men know ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. So now, this now is our new commandment. The new commandment of the new covenant was given, that was given at the Last Supper, which Christ has now fulfilled at the cross. The cup is the blood that was shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins. And the bread was the bro that was broken was his broken body, which includes the stripes for our healing. Psalm 27, 8, tell, tell us what you said, seek my face. My heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Healing begins by walking in obedience, which is love. If healing begins by walking in obedience, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for you right now, my beautiful believer? Let me take you on a walk in the word to see what the word of God says. First Peter 2, to tell us as newborn by babes, desire the pure milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Obedience is love in action. Exodus 15, 26 tell us, and said, if thou wilt, wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and do, and do, wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. This is the promise of God's blessings of a, of a obedience to the Israelites, God's children, through the Old Covenant. The blessings of obedience include God's healing and the removal of all sickness and disease. In the New Testament, we are given a new commandment of love. In Matthew 24, 33 through 40, we hear it as Jesus answers the question, which is the greatest commandment? But when the Pharisees had heard that he put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all, and with all thy soul and with all, all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus is saying, if we do this, we are fulfilling the law. Children of God to love and obey. In the book of John, we are addressed as children of God. And John is discussing both love and obedience in detail as our mission as those children of God, as those beautiful believers. 
First John 3, 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. John 3, 18 and 19 tell us, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. When God convicts us of the sin that lives within, we feel that conviction of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. We feel our hearts condemn us and we know we must be walking in disobedience in some area of our life. This gentle conviction is in our hearts is godly sorrow leading our hearts to repentance. First John 3, 21 through 24 tell us, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth or do his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he, which he hath given us. First John for 7 through 12 tell us beloved let us love one another for love for love is of god and everyone that loveth is born of god and knoweth god he that loveth not knoweth not god for god is love in this was manifested the love of god toward us that because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we, we might live through him. Herein is love. Now, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time, but if we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Obedience is love in action in the New Testament. Loving one another is how we, how God's love. Loving one another is how God's love is made perfect in us. Loving one another is how we answer the prayer to fulfill God's purposes and establish his kingdom in the earth thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven as matthew 6 10 tells us we are witnesses of god's love by our love this is the heart of heaven john first john 4 13 and 16 tell us hereby know ye that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love God hath to us. First John. 4, 16 through 19 continue and tell us and so we know and rely on the love God has for us God is love and he that dwelleth in God dwelleth in love and God in him herein is our love made perfect and there is no that we may that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in the world there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth 
is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. And so we know and rely on God's love. Our love is made perfect in his. Our love made perfect through his perfect love. The antidote to fear is God's perfect love. 1 John 4, 19 tell us we love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 20 and 21 continue. It says, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth is not his brother whom he hath seen. <clears throat> How can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we have we from him that he that who loveth God loveth also his brother and God loveth his brother also my beautiful believer do you know what this is talking about this is talking about restored relationship this is talking about forgiveness about this is talking about loving your enemy Walking in love allows us to be in right relationship, first with God, then with each other. I was so convicted in my heart of hating my brother in my heart. My ex-husband was my offender, was my enemy, was first God's child and my brother in Christ. He was my brother as a believer. He was God's believer, beautiful believer first. and. By the witness of the Holy Spirit, my heart condemned me. I was walking in sin, and I was sinning against God, and I was out of being out of right relationship, being in broken relationship with another believer, with our brothers and sisters in Christ, causes us to be out of right relationship with God. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, is a liar. Obedience is love in action in the Old Testament. Let me walk you through Isaiah 58. We talked about this in the Bible study this week. And I got to read this and I said, I teach this. And this is, and now I get to explain it and teach it. So perfect timing. God's perfect timing. Thank you, Lord. So let me walk you through Isaiah 58. This is obedience, is love in action in the Old Testament. This is written by the prophet Isaiah to God's children. Verses 1 through 5 are God showing us, the, are God showing the people their hearts. The second set of verses 6 through 11 are God showing us what pleases his heart. We see disobedience versus obedience. This is what displeases God, contrasted with what pleases the heart of heaven. Listen, my beautiful one. Isaiah 58, 1 through 5, King James Version. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy whole voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. As a nation that, that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They, for they ask me the ordinances of justice and they take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore we have fasted and they say, and thou seest us not. Wherefore we have afflicted our soul and tasteth and taketh take us no knowledge. Behold, in the day of our fast ye find pleasure and exact your labors, all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, and make your voice be heard on high. Verse five. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? It is to bow down his head in the bulrush and to spread a sackcloth and ashes under him. Wilt thou call a fast and a 
an acceptable day of the Lord? This is God's children approaching God with a fast, seeking God, and yet not honoring him in righteousness, but in strife and in debate, and smiting with the fist of wickedness. Now God describes what is acceptable and what pleases his heart. We see the heart of heaven here. Isaiah 58, 6 through 11. Is it not the fast? Is this not the fast I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and ye, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and thou wilt bring to the poor that are cast out of thy house? And when thou seest the naked, thou cover him, and thou hide not yourself from thine own flesh. Don't get in fights with your family. <laughs> there we go. I mean, this is real. You're right. Getting mad at each other. <laughs> Being angry, right? Punching each other. Then shall, okay. <clears throat> then, this is ver verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call on the Lord, and I shall answer, thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, and, put, and the putting forth of the finger, and the speaking vanity, and if thou draw out the, thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, and thou shalt, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. This means our God will shine light on all of our things on, in the darkness, and will show us the way, and the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make thy fat, thy bones fat. Praise God. <laughs> That's important, right? It's talking about our bones. Right. And make thy, and thou shalt be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. This is God's description of loving one another. When we walk in love. In the, thy light shall break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. Your healing will quickly appear. Your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Obedience to love in action brings the blessings of God. This is God's blessing that comes immediately when we walk in love, and our hearts do not condemn us. God's ears are open to our prayer and our healing will quickly appear. He will strengthen our bodies and heal our broken bones. Yes, and amen, like mine. All my miracles of healing in my life have been the blessing of God. We will be like a well-watered garden flourishing in life. All the blessing of the country, the blessing of the beautiful is God's blessing coming upon me, coming upon us. Because our heal, my healing will quickly appear when I start walking in obedience, when I, when I forgave from my heart, when I forgave all those who had hurt my heart from my heart. Healing happened. Miracles, signs, and wonders happened. The healing of my body happened. And when I, when we learn about the spirit of fear, and that when we're walking in fear, it's worry, and when we repent of the fear, because fear has torment, and we, because fear has torment. And when we say, God, forgive me for worrying, and we go and said, forgive me for listening to the lies of that spirit of fear. And that spirit of fear goes away.
and we give it to God and we and we have peace of mind. No more worry, no more worry, worry, no more anxious thoughts, no more spirit of fear, no more torment because fear has torment. It's a spiritual issue. It's a spiritual issue of the heart. And so when we actually ask the Lord, when we walk in obedience and we give this to God, our healing will quickly appear. No more cortisol is being released into our bodies to break down our immune system. No more unforgiveness in my heart. No more bitterness in my heart to cause, to cause the cancer. Right? It's real. All of this, when we walk in obedience, our healing will quickly appear. Because it's a blessing. It's a, because the enemy has no way. The enemy has no ground anymore to attack us. To attack us with sickness and disease when we're walking. Because in the blood of Jesus, in the covenant of the blood of Jesus, we're covered by his bubble of righteousness. And this is what happens, is that we are safe because God, because of our, because of our faith in Jesus. But when we walk in disobedience, we open the door to the enemy and we open the door to those toxic thoughts and when we believe them, he, they have power over us. But when we, when we walk in obedience, thy light shall break forth as the morning and thine health shall quickly, so shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before me. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. And Isaiah 58, 8 in the NIV says, your, then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. We will be, this is God's blessing. We will, when we walk in love and our hearts do not condemn us. God's ears are open to our prayers and our healing will quickly appear. He will strengthen our bodies and heal our broken bones. Amen. And this is the blessing of God. Like a well, we will be like a well-watered garden. Flourishing life. Life. We, this says we will be like uh, full of living water springs full of living water that's Jesus right this is God's promise to all his children this is God's promise to every beautiful believer this is God's promise to you yes right when we are in right relationship loving God others and ourselves. The blessings of God are immediate, immediate now, immediate, okay? When our hearts do not condemn us, when we walk in repentance, forgiveness, and in love, we become his beautiful believers. I love this scripture, Isaiah 57, 55, verse seven, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon on me our loving God others and ourselves we are being doers doers of the word and obedient to God's command to love and we are fulfilling the law of God. When we are fulfilling the law of God, God fulfills his promises to us. It's this simple, amen. We become the manifestation of heaven's heart here. We become the promise fulfilled, right? We become the promise fulfilled. And I want, Jeremiah, this is, I'm going to say something. Jeremiah 17, 14 and 15 says, Heal me, Lord, and I will, I, I memorized this 
He said it over and over and over all the time. Heal me, O oh Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved for thou. You are the one I praise. They keep saying to me, where is the word of the Lord? Let it now be fulfilled. Fulfilled. Jeremiah in, in 17, 14, at 15. It's another verse. This is, that was NIV. This is King James Version. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. When we are believing for a promise of God, when we are given a promise of God in the word of God, when we are given a promise of God, when we're holding on to promises in his heart, like healing, right? Like my miracles. God gave me. God gave me that promise of the miracle at the gate beautiful. He said that was physical and emotional and spiritual healing. And that was going to be my testimony. And that was his promise to me. And even when I was when I was battling cancer, when I was battling the traumatic brain injury and Huntington's disease, he gave me that promise that this was this was going to be the miracle of at the gate beautiful and and so so i held on to that and i believed and i also had another person say in in the prayer room that the lord was going to heal me and so uh, and um i mean just other of that traumatic tra traumatic brain injury but he had to teach me he had to teach me to take my authority he had to teach me how to how to defeat the devil. He had to teach me to walk in my authority in Christ. He had to teach me. And you know what? And the fact is, is that God's, it's like, Lord, Lord, why has this not happened yet? <laughs> why has this not happened yet? I, you know, I was just like awful. It was just bad. It had been over a year and I was battling and waiting for my miracle and waiting for my miracle and wait and praying and praying and, and you know what and but it's I had to learn to take it that it was mine and he said it's unbelief that I was walking still in unbelief and we have to it's it's never him it's, God is perfect he could heal you he's already done it's a finished healed work the work of healing. It's a finished work. All of it. And his promises are yes and amen. Everything. Every promise is yes and amen. And it's all for us to walk in these things. We just have to hold them and believe them and receive them and stand on them even during the broken leg even the, during the traumatic brain injury and not being able to see, ah, oh, it was awful, awful. And symptoms of Huntington's. I had to fight those symptoms and curse the curse in my family tree. And I will not die for the sins of my father. Fathers, surely I will live. This is the scripture over and over and over. You hold on to that promise and you believe it is truth. Now, we believe. We believe and we receive, but this is the promise. This is the promise. It's already ours. It's already, every promise of God is yes and amen. This is God's, God wants us to be healed. God wants us to walk in divine health. He wants us, he wants our hearts to be healed. And he wants our bodies to be healed and our lives to be restored. But we'll walk, when we open the door and walk in disobedience, we open the door to the enemy. But when we're walking in obedience, all, everything comes, right? The blessings will quickly appear. Forgive us, O oh Lord. For wherever our hearts have condemned us for the sin 
that we have been walking in. Forgive us, Lord, for sinning against you. Forgive us, Lord, those of us who have forgive us as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Father, thank you, God. Help us to walk in obedience. Help us to walk in love. Thank you, Father, for the healing heart of heaven. Thank you, Father, for my miracles. Thank you for the healing power that is touching the heart, the mind, and the body, and the spirit of every beautiful believer living broken right now in Jesus' name. Let it now be fulfilled. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So I am also talking about the act of communion because this is really important. And this is one of the things, part of, part of, um, and we are, I have, I have my, I have my communion wafers here and my grape juice. And, but I, what I want to do is walk you guys, teach you about the act of communion because I, I know that I was, there were things in my heart that I was, when I was sitting, there are scriptures that I'm going to teach even today that I'm going to help explain to you about communion and what it represents and how we can take it for our healing. But if we don't believe that's, that it's for our healing, then we won't be healed. Right? Half our churches are teaching that this is not part of the covenant, that this is not something that God provides. And so I'm gonna discuss this in talking about the act of communion. There's a scripture that I need to elaborate on and teach concerning the act, the act of communion and discerning the Lord's body within the body of Christ. We're talking about the elements and what they represent or don't represent and how to judge ourselves appropriately before taking, before partaking of this sacrament. You can go, you can go and get some, get your juice or crackers or whatever if you'd like to join me or, um, and prepare your heart to prepare to do this. But we will, do, we'll pray. But I'm going to teach you and show you so you can at least discern what's in your heart so that you don't take it unworthily. Okay, so that what we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about what this represents and how to judge ourselves appropriately before we take this communion. So part of the sacrament includes walking in forgiveness, but believing in the healing work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I'm teaching this scripture specifically because this scripture discusses sickness and disease in the body of Christ. And I've also said that there is a spiritual healing dimension to the act of forgiveness. 1 Corinthians 11, 27 through 31, it says, wherefore, Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord, but let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak, and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. It is the Lord's body. We must discern. It is by his stripes. We are, we were, and are healed. We must believe it is the, the truth. As we receive and partake of the bread as his body. And for our healing is and is available to us in the body of Christ as well. We, 
we partake and receive and believe God has freely given himself for us, for our healing as a redemptive work of Christ, Christ on the cross. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5 tell us, Surely he hath borne our grief, griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted, verse 5, by his by. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Matthew 8, 17 tells us that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. 1 Peter 2, 24 tells us who his own self bare our sins on the body, on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. There is a healing dimension to the act of forgiveness. If we don't want to be sickly and die prematurely, then we must have faith in the healing provided by Jesus Christ on the cross, as well as forgiveness Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Matthew 21 to 22 tell us, and all things whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible for him that believeth. Mark 11 22 through 26 and Jesus answering saith unto, unto them have faith in God for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain move be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Right? And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will, you, will, neither with your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. John, this is huge, right? <laughs> I mean, it's big. I was living in unforgiveness for like years. And I took communion every time I went to church, but I had to forgive given my brother in my heart. So I was actually drinking condemnation and taking on myself and bringing a curse upon myself because of the, because I was harboring unforgiveness in my heart for years, 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 years. And to not even know. And then even afterwards, when I had a new husband and everything, I was still had unforgiveness and bitterness in my heart, which is why I got cancer. And well, which was the reason I was diagnosed with cancer. But, uh, but I was, there was unforgiveness in my heart. Unforgiveness is the number one block to healing. And I had to repent. I had and I had taken communion unworthily all those years and I was sick in my body and this is a scripture right <laughs> these are scriptures that are true and that we that we curse ourselves with a curse by walking in disobedience to the commandments of love right so and ask if you ask anything and not okay and whatsoever you ask in my name and that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son if he ask if she you shall ask anything in my name I will do it if you love me keep my commandments what are the commandments of God to love one another John 16 24 hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. This scripture in 1 Corinthians 11 is talking about taking communion in unbelief. 
not realizing its true significance and not discerning the Lord's body and blood in order to receive the benefits by faith. It, it also refers to the saved or unsaved um, man or woman who takes communion with sin in his or her life without making confession unto salvation, acknowledging personal needs without judging him or herself so as to escape the chastening of God, sickness and disease, and premature death are the chastening of God. First Corinthians 11, 27 and 31. I'm going to read this again. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the blood, body and blood of the Lord. This is like really important. The communion is really important. It's really important. It's a sacrament that's that's holy. It's holy, and God is holy, and and we need to take it. Worthily before the Lord because it's because it's to all the God. Right? So it says, let a man examine himself and so let eat that bread and drink that cup, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, again this is verse thirty, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you and may many sleep sleep is death right for if we would judge ourselves we should not be judged in communion we are celebrating the remembrance of Christ in two dimensions his shed blood and his broken body the cup for the blood the water and the wafer the wafer a bread or cracker for his broken body. When we unworthily partake of what forgiveness by God represents in communion, we do not repent unto him. This is partaking unworthily. You have cursed yourself with the curse because you have made what Jesus did at the, co at the cross of no effect for you. It is not the sacrament that saves you but the obedience of the act of communion. Part of this is not judging ourselves with regard to sin and at the, as the spiritual roots of disease. As we judge ourselves, we bring forth repentance so the forgiveness, deliverance, and healing can be appropriated, bringing forth the full benefits provided by the Lord, in the Lord's Supper. Judging ourselves involves having the discernment to know specifically what is being repented for. Another way we have been partaken communion unworthily is we are eating each other alive, not discerning the Lord's body. This creates what we might call an autoimmune disease in the church body, in the broken body of Christ. This is the body of believers rejecting each other, attacking one another in relationships like an autoimmune disease attacks the physical body. The church is called the body of Christ. We must learn to discern one another as part of our own body. First Corinthians 12, 27. Now ye are, ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Galatians 6 to bear ye one, one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. This aspect has to do with fellowship and relationship with one another in the church. If you say you love the Lord, yet hate your brother, the love of God is not with you. 1 John 3 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. It's important. This is very important. When we partake of the Lord's Supper in remembrance of him, 
we're saying to Jesus because of what he did for us. We are ready to do this for each other. Not dying for each other's sins, but laying down our lives in service to one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. When we partake of communion, ignoring our brother and sister in his sickness and disease, we have negated the fellowship communion represents and we are cursed with a curse. Communion is koinonia in, in number 2842 in Greek Strong's Concordance or Fellowship. We must, I'm going to say that again, communion is koinonia, which is number 2842 in, Greek, in the Greek Strong's Concordance or Fellowship. We must focus on the horizontal relationship with within the body of Christ. The horizontal relationship within the body of Christ, which is our relationship with our brother and sister in Christ, as well as on the vertical relationship with each other, with the three persons of the Godhead, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 10, 16 and 17 says, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ, the bread which we break? Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, being many, are one bread and one body, for we all are partakers of that one bread, that one bread. First John 1, 7, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. The cup is the blood for the forgiveness of sins of, on the vertical level from God and on the horizontal level with each other. The bread is the bread of life is the bread of life for the broke for the healing of our bodies and the helping through the helping of the hurting helping others with the spiritual issues of their hurt reaching out or reaching into the broken body of believers the healing of our hearts and the healing of our relationships it is the beautiful bride becoming one and i teach on this the beautiful bride becoming one my beautiful bride my beautiful believers becoming one ministering the life of god to each other then we can truly say romans 14 17 for the kingdom of god is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the holy ghost there is another aspect of healing in first corinthians 11 which is more serious and as it addresses churches who do not believe healing is for today. This is why many denominational churches, people are dying with insanity and disease because the very thing they need healing for was provided for them at the cross and the communion services represented are negated by half. That is one half is rejected in unbelief and doctrinal positioning while still being celebrated in the actual com communion service. This is what is happening. The shed blood was Jesus, was for the, not for the healing of disease. Okay, this is what is happening, okay. The shed blood of Jesus was not for the healing of disease. His shed blood was for the forgiveness of sins. Scripture is clear, without the shedding of blood, there is no remissions of sins. 40, uh, Matthew 26, 28 say, for all and almost all for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is the shedding, which is shed for the remissions of sins. Did I read that? And I think I missed it. And almost for this is my blood of the new covenant, of the new testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Hebrews 9, 22. 
and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without the shedding of blood there is no remission of, of sins when we come into communion and we take the cup we acknowledge that he that he did for us that what he did for for us allows us to be able to repent and have cleansing and forgiveness of sin. First John 1, 7 through 10 tells us, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, his son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If first time, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. However, the broken bread represents the broken bread represents the stripes that were laid on Jesus. This bread represents freedom from the curse. And the curse is all manner of disease in Deuteronomy 28. First Peter 2, 24 says, Who whose self, who his own self bear our sins on his body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes he were healed. When we do not believe healing is for today, and teach that it is not. And then take the bread of communion, which represents the freedom from the curse, but deny the freedom is for today. We have brought a curse into our lives. We are cursed with the curse, which is the disease we now say we cannot be healed from. And yet we celebrate the sacrament, providing that the healing, this is this providing for that healing, and this is theologically incorrect. This, is hap this happens because we negate one half of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. In partaking of the bread, we curse ourselves in our own ignorance and our apostasy. For these reasons, many of us are weak and sick and die premature deaths because we are cursed with a curse we are brought on by ourselves through our own if you don't believe, it won't happen. <laughs> if if you don't believe, if there's unbelief in your heart, then then you won't then you won't be healed, right? So <laughs> so believe. This this is very difficult, but very important. These were some of the these were some of the spiritual issues of my own heart. And when I needed to repent, uh, I needed to repent of to receive my healing. Those who are not correctly discerning the body of Christ personally and what, what and the work that he did at the cross represents opens the door to sickness and disease and premature death. It is a spiritual block to healing. We are going to partake of communion. So I'm going to give you some time. Go and get your get your juice, get your cup, get your bread, and we're going to pray over this as well. I'm going to give you some time. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for watching. And I, this is just so important that we have, we just haven't known that we're suffering the consequences of our own sins of unforgiveness. And we're taking communion unworthily or we're not being taught. It wasn't taught in my church that it was for healing, but well, and I was studying healing when I was learning this, of course it's, by his stripes, 
you're healed. And I, I believe, I believe in miracles and I believe in God's, in everything the Bible says is, is available today. Miracles, signs, and wonders are available today, right? Right now, today. And this, your miracle, your sign and your wonder is, is available for you today, even, even as you take this communion. When we take this, when we take the, the broken body of Jesus and we take, when we cover, we're covered by the blood of the covenant and, and by his stripes, we're healed. By his stripes, I am healed. By his stripes, you are healed. So I'm just gonna, we're gonna pray. First, let us, Father, let us examine ourselves before the Lord and search our own hearts. This is a holy act. Where there is unforgiveness in our hearts, we let it go. Please forgive me for my unforgiveness. Please forgive me for taking communion unworthily before you, Lord. I repent before you now for taking this act of communion without acting in forgiveness first. Please cleanse me of all unrighteousness now as I act in forgiveness in this holy act of communion in the precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I ask you now, as we uh, prepare to go before you and take your Holy Communion, I ask, Lord, that you would just search our hearts and bring bring remembrance, remembrance in our minds to where we may have sinned against you. Forgive us for the unforgiveness in our hearts. Forgive us for our unforgiveness, or for our own unbelief, not believing, and even as leaders in the body of Christ, not even teaching on healing, believing it's not for today. Believing, and forgive us for our un unbelief cleanse us from all unrighteousness as we even take this this communion Lord we bless the cup and we bless the bread of every person that we that it would be for your glory and that it would be blessed by you and prepared for communion for your body in Jesus name so in Matthew 26 through 30 in the New Living Translation as they were eating Jesus took some of the bread and blessed it and then he broke it in pieces and he gave it to the disciples saying take this and eat it this is my body So good to <laughs> eat food in front of people. <laughs> Forgive me for laughing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is important, Father, for the healing of our bodies, for the healing of our bones, for the healing of our minds, for the healing of our of our broken body. Body it was your broken body. For by your stripes we are healed. So we take. We take that bread and we believe for our healing right now in Jesus' name. And take this cup, eat it, for this is my mm, for this is my body. And he took the cup of wine and he gave thanks for it. And he gave it to them and he said, Each of you drink from, from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink this wine again until the day I drink it 
new with you in my Father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Drink for the forgiveness of the sin. Thank you, Father, for your covenant. Thank you, Father, for your new covenant. And thank you for the, the covenant of healing that comes with it. We thank you for the, your broken body. And we thank you, God, for the blood of Christ. We thank you, God, for the sacrament of healing that comes with the act of communion. We believe. And we will receive your miracles now. We believe. And we will receive your healing now. We believe and we receive your forgiveness now in Jesus name and by his stripes I'm healed in Jesus name so thank you for joining me and I can't wait <laughs> I'm so glad um, and uh, this is just and everything is so wonderful um, I've got poems to read you now working for your grace this intimacy that's all that I wanted living living my every moment for you working my way to get into your graces trying my hardest to get close to you all of my efforts were simply to bring me into your arms so that I could be loved wanting to please you so you would receive me I struggled to gain your acceptance and love feeling unworthy I searched for the answer following pa patterns that others had lain, trying to find that kind of communion that suits condemnation and ceases the blame. Prayer without ceasing and quoting of, of scripture. I tried everything to come into your uh, spiritual battle and service to all. I tried everything to come into your presence, yet the harder I'd climb, the harder I'd fall. Misunderstanding and somewhat misguided, I yielded believing to spiritual lies, naive and seeking. I opened myself to the You know my husband, so. <laughs> he came home at noon, <laughs> just in time for me to do this. He's been outside. Anyway, so, anyway, seeking, um, misunderstanding somehow, and I believe it. I yielded believing to spiritual lies. Not even seeking, I opened myself to, to be led and encouraged by those who had blind eyes. Seeking what that they had, I prayed you would use me. I measured your love by the gifts, gifts you bestow. Think that this was the way, thinking that this was the way you responded. Love shown by a degree of supernatural flow. I waited for visions of great revelation. I strained for that voice that I needed to hear. I received as rejection the silence to follow. Believing I failed, so you wouldn't draw near. All that I wanted was the chance to be near you, needing the closeness that fatherhood brings. Wishing for love so strong I could feel it, love wrapping around me like angel's wings. Forgive me, Lord, please, for all of my blunders, for all the sins and mistakes I have made. But by taking my hand and I think, but no, my intentions and grant me your mercy by taking my hand and leading the way. Show me the truth that I might come to know you. Seeing you intimately with my heart. Draw me into the love I've longed for. That I've longed for the right foundation to make a new start. And this is God's response. I am your lifeline. It breaks my heart to see my my children without victory. I watch as hidden sinning is keeping you from winning. If you would give to me those parts of you you hold on to, then this could be for you a new beginning. Hold on to me. I am your lifeline. In your greatest time of need, I am your lifeline. With every breath you breathe, I am your lifeline. Hold on to me. I see you in your pain, how hard your life has been. I watch you in your striving. You've lost your joy for living. If you would come to me and let me in, turn from your sin, then you would find the peace that I am giving. Hold on to me. 
I am your lifeline. And your greatest time of need, I am your lifeline. With every breath that you breathe, I am your lifeline. Hold on to me. And when you call my name, I will be there for you. I will comfort you, strengthen you, and pull you through. Hold on to me. I am your lifeline. In your greatest time of need, I am your lifeline. With every breath you breathe, I am your lifeline. Hold on to me. Hold on to me. Hold on to me. I will set you free. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me and um, this week, this next week is the beautiful and um, it's all about beautiful, beautiful you and it's the beginning, the beautiful and believing, beautiful divine and uh, all my miracles and so can't wait to see you and thank you Jesus and God is God loves you believe the beautiful mm. and I thank you God for miracles signs and wonders in Jesus name I pray be blessed and healed in Jesus name